Welcome to uh, final wrap-up uh, sessions. I deplore the time is rather limited. We have uh, 15, we have 15 minutes, but time is ticking. We have 13 minutes because we need the time for group photo with you know the uh, your excellencies and Swedish delegations. So this wrap-up uh, presentation is uh, designed in a way that we can share what was happening in each group. So uh, without any further ado, we have uh, Jun Hong and Ayun and Youngjae and Yerin, which play role of Madrid. So uh, I will give each about two minutes. So could you uh, tell us what happened in your group? All right, so I first of all would like to thank the two members of uh, two members who participated in our uh, discussion in our table. We mostly talked about how Sweden could have such levels of political trust that could be compared with um, that of South Korea. And we thought that there could be some traditional or tradition of politics or some other factors. And from our discussion, we could see that there were mainly three factors that um, made politics in Sweden much more democratic and much more trustworthy. Um, first of all, we could say that scrutiny on politicians is much more, um, ha creates a lot of trust in politics itself. Um, Mr. Pedersen told us that politicians are scrutinized financially to a very big, very large extent. And you all have to report receipts and have protocols for meetings and things like that. And it looks like Sweden has a sort of culture of political scrutiny. And how that is enforced is through a party's gentleman's agreement. And this sort of political tradition of having a sort of gentleman's agreement and taking accountability taking responsibility for any wrongdoings that you did and having a political tradition a political tradition of being a, taken accountable for any kind of wrongdoing that you do is very valuable for having a very uh, strength uh, strengthful a very strong and striving democracy the second factor i would say would be cooperation within pol political parties and our two members expressed the views that cooperation within the party structure is very important and because Sweden is created in a uh, par parliamentarian structure, finding alliances within the party structure and cooperating within the structure is very important. So there's no political tr tradition of a winner-takes-all structure of a presidential um, political structure. So a lot of Swedish parliamentarians are involved and engaged in discussion. The last factor we discovered was participation in both the national, regional, and local levels, and the large um, parts, large percentage of youth participation in political affairs. Um, we were told that we have Sweden, Sweden has large levels of regional and lo local level political participation, and it's easy to build organizations for new agendas and create new organizations, including youth organizations that are added into each parties that can stimulate and instill more youth participation in politics. So I think these three factors are the reasons why um, Swedish people have a large, have a very high level of trust and efficacy in politics. Thank you. Wonderful. Among those, I think, you know, the scrutiny of financial statement and corruptions related issues uh, comes to my mind. Thank you. And Ayan? Uh, Hello, my name is Ayonim, and I am a moderator from Group B. Um, first, we talked about the COVID pandemic and the effect of um, its effect on democracy. Um, in Korea, we had uh, controversies among, um, in relation to the uh, privacy rights and civil liberty and the uh, safety needs. Um, though we had some controversy regarding the regulation uh, for example, like contact tracing and, and um, vaccination certificate. Uh, but we heard that Sweden had a few regulations and they could go, uh, Sweden could go through with uh, uh, a lot of regulation. And uh, we could hear that uh, it is, it could, uh, they could go through without a 
a lot of regulation because they could take some functional view between the civil rights and um, liberty and the safety needs. So um, in relation to that, uh, there was a, we could also raise an issue about the political polarization in Korea. Um, um, recently we had a election and we could go through a uh, we had a lot of problem with the political polarization problem, and we've, we've heard that Sweden had uh, relatively relatively a uh, few issues about the political polarization, and that might be able because of the good journalism or like um, they had a good public square that people could uh, share their opinions uh, about public. Um, about political opinions, so we could also hear the importance of good journalism, and that might make uh, that might protect uh, good political opinion and uh, discussions. So that was our point about the international perspective on democracy, and also we talked about uh, the importance of trust in political sphere. So. Uh, Sweden had a uh, high, um, high trust, uh, and that could make the that could build a consent um, over consent of the public. So that might be important in Korea also. And we also talked about how should Korea have the the kind of high trust in that all that will also be important in democracy and the future of democracy. So that was our point in, um, in relation to the future of democracy. Thank you and yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ayan. Now moving back to Youngjae. Um, we worked off of um, Speaker Nolan's idea of how turbulence led to a change in some kind of public interest. And this was a key point of discussion for us as my fellow members in our panel discussed about how in Korea, oftentimes turbulence leads to um, bad effects in terms of either the political apathy of young people in our society. And personally, I think maybe being a huge optimist that this political recent presidential election in Korea might be a turning point in where it might not be apathy, but possible for some, for possibility for some change in terms of discussion and um, negotiation. In terms of this, after that, we talked about the pandemic and the policy making and the domestic response of each country. And here we were able to find that the background and settings in terms of our two countries were pivotal in pushing for the different kinds of changes and legal responses. For instance, we were able to learn that in terms of a curfew, there would be no constitutional grounds from the perspective of Sweden, whereas we have had multiple curfews in South Korea. Spanning from this, we were able to talk about some key issues as well. One issue that we discussed was, I think, a common issue that came up in the other group's discussions about individual trust in not, your just, not just your politicians and your assemblymen, but also in terms of people next to you in society. And how, in terms of Sweden, how the individual trust level as the person next to you in your society, you expect them to be a moral person, you expect them to be a law-abiding individual, is actually quite very high. I think com coming from a personal perspective, um, this led me to think about this issue in Korea as well. I think this has changed across time, um, maybe some generation gap here. But in terms of, we used to go several, numerous, maybe three, four of us to a friend's house. But now in the new generation, this isn't something that is as common. You do not know your neighbor as much. So I think that was one thing. And lastly, we also talked about gender equality and how maybe we can integrate these kinds of different issues. And in terms of how Sweden has progressed in terms of suffrage from years on to actually having more members of parliament, uh, female members of parliament in Sweden as well. So those were the key issues that we touched upon. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Yerin. Thank you. First of all, I apologize for the slight delay I may have caused in our session and our already tight schedule. Um, so to sum up our group's discussion, our group dealt with a right, wide range of topics, but I think we can roughly wrap it up in one theme, and that is division and overcoming division, or the need to overcome division. We talked about the division among 
political spectrum. So we talked about how the rise of far right is a pressing concern for most European countries and also in Korea as well. And we considered some of the reasons why that may be. Um, for instance, in Sweden, we learned that most protests in Sweden in recent days has been due to the anti-vaccination rhetoric and how sometimes politics may be exacerbating uh, some of these ideological dif uh, differences amongst uh, constituents. We also talked about gender division, uh, the need for gender equality, and how gender has become a very divisive topic in Korean society these days as well. Uh, we also talked about the generational gap because generational division is also a strong issue, uh, political uh, divisive factor in Korea. But I was surprised to note that it's sort of the other way around in Sweden. Um, there's we learned that people are saying that there should be more older people in politics in Sweden, whereas in Korea, it's maybe the other way around. So that was an interesting factor that I noted. But anyway, the key to everything I learned that, and I think all my team members would agree, interest in politics is key to overcoming division. And to end uh, my uh, summary on a more positive note, on a more hopeful note, uh, the division is strong in both Sweden and in Korea, but I think us participating in this dem democracy uh, seminar and also ha um, talking with such polished politicians like the uh, uh, Miss Waldo that we talked with, who actually um, was able to implement a system where a single woman could get education and LGBT education as well during her time as deputy mayor. So I think this experience was a inflection point for both generations. So I would like to end on a hopeful note. Thank you. Well, our time is rather limited, but uh, I don't think I can end without inviting a few observations from Swedish delegations. So either Mr. Speaker or Ambassador or some, you know, uh, politicians who had discussion with uh, Korean students, anything to uh, add? Well, thank you. I, I have spoken so much, so I would like to invite my colleagues to perhaps say a couple of words. Uh, Björn? <laughs> It's nice to delegate sometimes. <laughs> yes, of, of course. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Speaker. Your wife just told me, do not take the floor. <laughs> we, we must be in time for dinner. So I will try to keep it short. I very much uh, enjoyed this uh, discussion and uh, the vibrant questions from your students. I'm very impressed. Uh, this has been uh, very giving uh, informative and uh, nice thing to do in our program. We have met a lot of people. I'm looking forward to seeing these people lead Korea. Uh, and I think I end at that queue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, in the beginning, I said uh, I was a student activist fighting for democracy. And perhaps uh, thanks to struggle of our generations, these young kids, they enjoy liberal democracy. They believe this is their birthright. But one thing important is we are facing mounting challenges. And as you know, Yerin mentioned, we have strong divide. But as long as we have resilient, solid democracy and democratic way of uh, you know, moving things forward, I think we have great hope. So uh, I'd like to make it as you know, the uh, ending note. But I believe this is not the end of our discussion. I think this is rather the beginning of our discussion between Swedish you know, leading intellect and Korean young generations. I promise I will bring in a new group of aspiring students to some, sometime either this year or next year to Sweden. So then I believe you know, the uh, ability of Mr. Speaker and ambassadors helping us out so we can have similar round table uh, along with other you know, sectors. So having said that, thank you very much. It has been a remarkable afternoon. And thank you very much for your all active participation. Thank you.